young coder or a young person who wants to get better at programming. In this video, I'll be talking about all the programming tips that I wish I knew when I had first started coding. A lot of these points have also been covered in my beginner tips video, which you can watch somewhere right here. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. Number zero. Don't get discouraged. Age is just a number. As long as you're interested and ready to learn, you aren't young for any skill. If programming is something that you genuinely enjoy doing and you want to expand your skill set, go for it. The world is your university. There are endless tutorials, free tutorials on YouTube itself. You don't even have to ask your parents to enroll you into really expensive courses so that you can further your journey in this skill. Number one, start small. My recommendation would be don't go for super difficult topics right at the start, like machine learning, blockchain development. I'm not trying to discourage anyone from learning about these skills, but these are extremely difficult concepts to understand even as a working professional, let alone a young person. You might get discouraged and lose all your enthusiasm and at the end, just stop coding. We don't want that. To understand these concepts, you need to at least have knowledge about high school level mathematics, which include topics like calculus, regression, or even sometimes undergraduate math courses like vector calculus and linear algebra. Hence, if you already don't have a firm grip on these topics, you can learn them side by side with tons of online courses on YouTube. There's open courseware by MIT, YouTube playlists, edX courses, or some other courses on other platforms as well. Number two, don't stop coding. You should never just completely give up on coding. If you feel unmotivated, you just have to push yourself through that state of inertia. Even if you don't like it, without making excuses that, oh, I have homework, oh, I have a side job. Well, these are legitimate concerns, but I'm just asking you to prioritize coding. It should not be an alternative option or once in a while thing if you actually want to get better at it. Number three, focus on building logic. You don't necessarily need to get competitive coding level good. That is overkill for when you're just starting out. When I talk about building logic, I mean logic building and pattern identifying. Being able to think about a problem in steps, break it down into smaller chunks and translating the entire process into code. For example, if you want to find a factorial of a number, you run a loop from 1 to the user entered number, initialize the factorial variable beforehand and then multiply each index with the factorial variable. Similarly, if you want to reverse all the words in a string, for example, hello world, welcome to Java, and you would like to print Java to welcome world hello, how would you do that? You first separate all the words in the string using the space as a delimit, as in keep appending all the characters to a new empty string until you hit a space and then you have your word. Then store it in a string or an array. If you're using a string, append it to the front. Keep doing that until you reach the end of your original string. This is a very simple problem. I remember really enjoying doing all these kinds of problems when I was preparing for my ICSC 10th grade board examinations. You could even take all of these questions from the ICSC previous year question papers and try to implement them. They're actually super simple and really at par with a beginner level code. This is really important because even if you know how to solve the problem, if you aren't able to translate it into code, you're just missing out on half of the most important part of programming. Number four, code mode. Watching tutorials after tutorials will not get you far. It is only actual coding that will spike your growth. For every video that you watch, solve 10 problems. That is a very good ratio to maintain. It is so easy to get stuck in tutorial hell. As I mentioned earlier, 10th grade questions, 12th grade questions, then you can graduate to solving lead code problems. The easy ones, of course, the medium and hard are still very ambitious for me as well. Number five, ask for help. It is difficult for even adults 
to learn languages, frameworks, and libraries. Most people give up quick. Even I did. Learn how to solve your problems. Learn how to Google. Learning how to Google will be an immense help to solving all your problems. Investing in a tutor, especially at a younger age, is going to pay off dividends in the future. If you're seriously interested in computer science and would like to pursue it further as a career, try taking all those computer science and coding related classes in your school. That often sets you up for the grind. You will also have a teacher who can guide you properly, pace you through the course and help you solve all your problems. Number 6. Learn to Google A lot of beginners really underestimate the degree to which Googling is a part of a software engineer's job. Sometimes, a developer's job may be more about how to Google the specific thing instead of actually coding it. Number 7. Learn to debug This is also very similar to the last point. If your code doesn't compile or run in its intended way, there are errors that need to be solved. Find out how to remove them. This is called debugging. If there is a compile time error, it could be as simple as a missing semicolon or an open or unclosed parenthesis. If you don't understand the prompt, put it on Google and look for all the search results that come up. You'll be surprised at how quickly you'll able to solve it. There are a thousand people who have hit the same obstacles while trying to code. I assure you, you are not alone. All your mistakes, all your problems, all your doubts can be easily resolved on the internet. If there is a logical error, try printing the internal values of all your variables after each step or dry run the code by your hand. There are also a lot more complex methods to debugging. Go crazy! Number 8. Start coding on proper IDEs A lot of edtech platforms teach students how to code on Scratch, which is a block-based coding language. I personally don't think that it is the most suitable route. It might be for very young kids, but I'm gonna assume you're not one of them. You're watching this video completely on your own, unprompted, out of conscious volition. If you learn to code in a real environment, it will make the initial learning curve really steep, but will benefit you in the future. It is easier to do the difficult things first than to do them later when you're already kind of comfortable. I guarantee you, if you see yourself through all the initial discomfort, there is a lot of privileges waiting for you on the other side. There are also numerous advantages of using an editor. Indent the code, the code editor tells you where the compile time error is and you can use all its debugging tools and extensions. Number 9. Always stick to one task at a time. It is very tempting to constantly switch from one topic to another because it is obviously so interesting but that can keep you from making progress in specific skills. You might be able to increase your knowledge but that is only going to be surface level. You will struggle with coding real life problems or actual usable applications. Our ultimate goal is to become so good at programming that you can make an entire project by yourself from scratch and that could take a while if you're not focusing on one area at a time. I did that a lot. That's why even if I spent a significant amount of time learning something, I couldn't retain it that well or build up on it. As a result, I had nothing to show for all the time that I had spent learning something. Hence, always stick to doing one thing at a time. Set small goals that, okay, you're gonna finish this much portion of the course today or you're gonna code out this much portion of whatever you have learned. That is it for today. If you'd like to graduate from a beginner to an intermediate, watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!